Hear now the word of the Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem, and he went into the temple. And when we looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Friends, welcome to Palm Sunday. We invite you now to stand, lift your voices, wave those palm branches, and join in our processional hymn. All right, guys.
Amen. You guys did so good. I think that is the best palm waving I've ever seen on a Palm Sunday. So keep it up. Keep doing that throughout all the songs this morning. And let's give a special wave to our children and youth who were waving the palm branches and processed in. We're going to dismiss them to go to Founders Hall for the King's Kid time uh, and dance this morning. So please make sure after the service, pick them up at Founders Hall. They'll have a great time with Melody and with Lisa. And let's continue to worship. I want to take just a moment to thank all of you for being here on Palm Sunday, this uh, wonderful beginning to Holy Week. Uh, what a blessing it is, as it always is, to be here in this space, of course, with all of you, uh, but also to be worshiping with those of you who are streaming. Uh, it's a gift, uh, and it's something that I love deeply, and I know that you do too. So let's go, uh, let's go to God together as we pray. Will you bow your heads, please? Dear, gracious, and amazing, and perpetual Lord, thank you. Thank you for the gift of this moment, and thank you for the gift of this day, and thank you for the gift of this season. We are blessed to be here as we, as we reflect on who you are in this world and in our lives. And as we look forward to your resurrection and our salvation, Lord, it's humbling and it is incredible and powerful and uh, allow us in this moment, Lord, and in every moment to, to embrace the truth that you bring to us to this place and let us live into that truth, your word, and let us see and feel your love and share that love freely as we, as we worship this morning and as we go through our lives. Let us always stay mindful of how blessed we are through your great and sacrificial love. Lord, I ask that you hear this prayer, as you always will. And Lord, I ask that you continue to hear all of our prayers, our prayers of joy and our prayers of sorrow and that you allow us to hold on to the strength that only you can provide and the courage and the, and the joyfulness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. It's a, it's a blessing to be loved and to love you in return. We pray these things this morning and all things in your son's holy and precious name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
remain standing and join in our opening prayer. The words will be on the screen for us. God of salvation, our Lord, entered his passion to raise us to this life. In this holiest of weeks, help us to walk the way of the cross, that we may be raised in a resurrection like his and dwell forever in you, eternal God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Well, grace and peace to you, church, and good morning and welcome on this Palm Sunday. It is a gift to be with you all. I'm Pastor John, and today Molly Johnson is helping us out as the liturgist, as Pastor Randy's away today to be at the baptism as his his granddaughter, Hukme, who I know many of you have been praying for. So what a special day for Randy and for the Orndorff family. Uh, As you're greeted this morning, we hope that you got a bulletin. I see that many of you got a palm. You should also get a palm cross. If you didn't get one on the way in, get one on the way out. This is for you to take home. If you want to take the palm branches with you, that's okay too. But know that we'll take those and we'll, we'll burn those and use those for ashes for palm or for ash wednesday uh, next year uh, but we're so grateful to, to have you all whether you're in person or online we invite you to fill out the back side of your bulletin uh, where you can put your uh, your presence with us today anything you're interested in and of course your prayer requests i want to let you know that here at aldersgate it's our mission uh, to courageously live and share god's unconditional love with everyone everywhere, every single day. And we hope that you join us in that mission together. Uh, And as you're greeted, I want to invite JD, one of our ushers, to uh, share a welcome bag. So if this is your first time here with us, just raise a hand. We'd love to give you a welcome bag. JD will uh, move forward and and, uh, and share a bag with you. Uh, And we want to welcome all of you who are online as well for the first time. Uh, We'd love to see your messages and comments in the chat. Uh, some announcements we'd like to share with you all. Uh, we know that the, the United Methodist Church is in the news right now and will continue to be in the news with General Conference. Uh, this is every four years we gather as a global church uh, to make decisions about the future uh, from big to small. Uh, so you'll be hearing and seeing a lot about that. Uh, it's coming up in April and May in Charlotte. Uh, please know we have a ton of great information on the website. Uh, Sue Kane, one of our uh, leaders, put that together along with uh, Molly and Jill, um, who helped put that on the website. So it's right there on the home page. It's also in the drop down on the welcome page. There's probably way more information than you ever care to know. But if you have questions, go there first. Uh, and Pastor Randy and I will be sure to follow up. It'll share all of the things that we're doing and sharing as well. Uh, We want to let you know we're in the season of nominations, Uh, so if you're interested in joining, serving, and leadership in any capacity, we have a lot of uh, spots that we would love to have you serve and use your gifts uh, and calling. So please uh, let Randy or I know if you're interested. We've got packets available for you, and we are setting up interviews right now. It is Holy Week, and we have kicked off Holy Week already, but we want to remind you that we have Monday, Thursday service and Good Friday, both 7 p.m. this week here in the sanctuary and online. Both of those will be great services that we hope you uh, enjoy and participate in. And of course, next Sunday is the big one. It's Easter. And Lord willing, the sun will rise, the sun will shine. We'll be out on the front lawn at 6.30. We'll wake up all the neighbors. Maybe that'll be some of you. That's my favorite thing about Easter sunrise is blaring the speakers and proclaiming Christ is risen to the whole 22308. Um, And then we'll be in here at 9.30 and 11 o'clock to worship and celebrate Easter. So I hope you will join us for that. We still have a few volunteer needs for both 9.30 and 11 for ushers and for serving communion. We're hoping to have uh, about 700 or more people here. So that means we're going to have a lot of communion and a lot of folks here. We hope you'll join us for that. Just a quick reminder, there's no Sunday school next week, so please have your kids join us in worship. It'll be a great worship opportunity. And then the following Sunday, April 7th, is our Serve Sunday, where we partner with Woodlawn Faith. We will have one worship service in here at 10 a.m., and it'll be a great celebration. It will also be another packed Sunday, so get here early uh, to celebrate that. If you show up at 930, you'll already have a seat ready for you and available. But then afterwards, we will pack 30,000 meals together with Woodlawn Faith uh, through Rise Against 
intense hunger. It will be a great uh, celebration of worship, partnership, and mission. Uh, so we want to remind you about that. And we will actually have Sunday school on Serve Sunday for our children. This will be from 10 to 11. So notice it'll match our worship time. And then whether it'll be weather dependent, they'll either be on the playground playing from 11 to 1130 or they'll be in Founders. Uh, so please uh, know that, that they're invited to Sunday school and your families are invited to be part of the meal packing as well. Also, on April 7th, uh, we hope that you'll be able to join us for Jesus Rocks, the prayer rock painting event. Um, I just love this graphic. You guys did a great job. This is a fun event. Uh, from three to four, this is K through sixth grade. Uh, hope you'll join us for this event. Pastor Randy and I are very excited to offer a faith sharing class. You've heard us talk a lot about grace and God's witness and witness in our life. So we would love to equip you with the tools to share your faith out in the community uh, with your friends and neighbors. If you're interested, you can see the dates that's going to start after Easter on Monday nights, uh, consecutive Monday nights from 7, 830. If you're interested, give Randy an email or on your bulletin, you can check on there that you would like to be part of the faith sharing class. Uh, we're very, very excited for that. So please join us. Our youth are taking a visit to the Holocaust Museum on April 13th. So please see Andreas if you have questions about that. This is for seventh through 12th grade. Our mission focus for March is our Woodlawn Faith food distribution. That's coming up on April 5th. So if you've not served or been part of that, please consider uh, joining us in that partnership at St. John's Baptist Church to help feed those in need. Also, if you're feeling up to it on Monday, Thursday, uh, we have a blood drive and that was not like any funky, funny business with Monday, Thursday and matching up communion and the blood and anything like that. This is just a missional thing that happened to land on Monday, Thursday. But if you really feel like giving blood, we hope you join us for that. Sign up is, uh, is available on our website. Uh, friends, with those announcements before us, we would like to invite you to stand as you're able to give a wave of your hand or palm branch to the folks online and turn and greet your neighbors with Christ's love. Well, friends, if you've noticed, we're in a bit of a theme right now. It's not Baptism Sunday every Sunday, but it feels like it. Um, so if you want to get baptized, send Randy and I an email. We'll just keep this up here uh, for as long as we can. Uh, but we are so excited to have Mari Craft be baptized today. Uh, I've been especially grateful to journey with the Craft family as I've been here. And they're part of our house church ministry, and I've, we love getting to know the girls. And about a month or so ago, Mari uh, said that she wanted to be baptized, and she said, you know, this is just the next step for me and my my faith. I mean, pretty amazing that Mari articulated that and shared that with us. And so we're so excited to uh, welcome her in Christian love and offer baptism. So church here now, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Today, we present Mari June Craft for baptism. So Mari, I ask you now, on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. 
Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord and union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. Perfect. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include Mari before you now in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Mari with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Friends, it was our eternal God that spoke. When nothing existed but chaos, O oh God, you swept across the dark waters. You brought forth light. And in the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by the Spirit. He called his disciples to share in his baptism of death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. So God, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Mari who receives it, to wash away her sin, to clothe her in righteousness, that throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in Christ's final victory. Now, friends, as we have blessed this water, I have to share with you that as we were walking with Mari through her baptism and how she wanted to be baptized, uh, I knew some things about the Kraft family. I know that they have a great boat. I know that they're a Navy family. I know they love to be out in the water. So I said, Mari, would you like a shell for your baptism? And she said, yes. So the shell is an ancient Christian symbol. Uh, I can see it right now in this great painting out in the narthex. Uh, it's an ancient Christian symbol of baptism to remind us of the waters that sweep over us. And so, Mari, as you're baptized today, know that there have been many, many Christians who have received the waters of baptism through the shell and who have looked to the shell as a sign of God's grace. So, Mari, I baptize you now. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, may you be anointed and loved and cared for throughout all your days. Now, friends, it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ and let us respond by saying, through baptism, you are inaugurated to the Holy Spirit and to God's new creation and made to share in the royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Amen. And Paul, our lay leader, is going to offer a prayer now for Mari. Heavenly Father, as we gather today here on Palm Sunday, we, unlike those 2,000 years ago, in Jerusalem, we know how this story ends, Lord. <clears throat> and we just ask that as Maury grows in spirit, she begins to truly understand how this story ends, what it means, the grace that God provided, Christ provided on that cross, and that she understand how that works in her life, her faith, and her work. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Maury, receive this blessing. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Molly, we've got some, some things to offer. Got a shell for you to remember your baptism and their special way that you were baptized with a shell today. We've got a certificate for you that's going to mark this. And we have this special candle for you that we encourage you to light it on the anniversary of your baptism every year to remember this special moment in your life and in your walk of faith. Great job. Yeah. Friends, let's share signs of God's grace and love with Mari and the Kraft family now. Good job, girls. Good job. Way to go. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. As we are
are celebrating our faith and celebrating the baptism of Mari today and celebrating Palm Sunday, uh, we also want to take a moment to share with you uh, about a ministry that's in our area called the Not Too Far From Here Ministry. Uh, it's an endowment that is dedicated to supporting those in need in our community. And so we uh, invite you to watch the screens as we have a special message from Johnny Coons and John Pike. Hi, I'm Johnny Coons, a co-chair of the Endowment Committee, along with John Pike. Hello. The Endowment Committee is responsible for managing 13 endowment gifts made to the church since 1986. These endowments include a general endowment, one for music enhancement, youth missions, worship, college, and seminary scholarships. One of the most important endowments is the Not Too Far From Here Fund managed by the committee. This fund was established through the generosity of one church member, Joe Tompkins. Joe Tompkins gave over $1 million to assist people in our community not too far from here. These people need immediate and short-term financial help to pay their rent, pay their utilities, car payments, and sometimes even medical bills. The fund has prevented countless family evictions avoided power shutoffs and restored transportation to people who need it to get to work, school, or doctor's appointments. The fund exclusively serves members of our local community not too far from here. Upon Joe's death, his family established a $400,000 endowment to continue his ongoing legacy of help. So far in 2024, the committee has fielded and responded to 42 requests for assistance in 2024 alone. We need your help to help continue Joe's legacy. Please consider giving to the Not Too Far From Here Fund, as other folks have done, either through a one-time gift or regular giving through Realm. Thank you. Thank you. Johnny and John, this time I'd like to invite our ushers forward for the receiving of our tithes and offerings.
Can you stand now and let's join our voices as we sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit. Holy Spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Will you pray with me? God, we come to you today on this beautiful Sunday, this beautiful Palm Sunday, as we come and enter Holy Week, uh, and we come with open hearts and open spirits as we celebrate the joy that is your arrival and knowing what's coming this week with your sacrifice for our salvation, Lord. We come to you with these gifts of our time, our talents, our financial resources, our love, our grace, and we offer this up to you and pray that we are able to take this out into your community so that we can continue to courageously live your unconditional love. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Today's reading comes from the 15th chapter of Mark. Now listen for the word of God beginning with the sixth verse. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over, but the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. And so Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, as we continue to worship this morning, would you join me in a word of prayer? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, if you're like me, you get pretty excited about dates on the calendar, especially those dates where it's a party or a trip or an event, some sort of birthday, anniversary celebration, you name it, you start to get pretty excited. If you're like me, you begin to dream about it and imagine it in your mind about what the atmosphere is going to be like, who's going to be around you in celebration, maybe even the kind of food you're going to have there. I often dream about the food that's there. Um, and maybe you've even already in your mind made memories that have not happened yet. You can just envision yourself in that space. And then we get there. And sometimes it's not always what we expect. Someone you really hoped couldn't make it. Someone got sick. The food is late or not what you expected at all. A conversation turns negative and everything on its head. Or maybe the pets or the kids just go wild. Who knows? And you start to ask yourself, how did we get here? How could something so pure and hopeful be turned? Well, friends, welcome to Palm Sunday, where we begin with triumph and end in chaos, just as that party. Friends, in Palm Sunday, it kicks off Holy Week for us. Holy Week being this particular time where we celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection. 
it's a mostly solemn week and we have different worship services and experiences to encounter that and be reminded of God's mercies and our sins. And it's kind of a both and week where it's hard and challenging, but also filled with joy too. And so today we perfectly hold that tension. And we begin that tension in Jerusalem as you heard the scripture pronounced from the back of the sanctuary this morning, Jesus entered Jerusalem. But you have to know that Jesus was actually avoiding Jerusalem for a while. This was the place of conclusion, the place where Jesus knew his life was going to end. And uh, he actually acknowledged in the scriptures in John's gospel that that's where he would be killed. And yet he returns for this religious pilgrimage, Passover, a holy week in and of itself. And it's a, a, a particular celebration that's reminded of God's providence in the Jewish tradition. And everything starts off great. People are shouting praise, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Now, this praise is not just something that came up with on the spot. No, it's, a, it's from Psalm 118. And so this is a prophecy being fulfilled. People are seeing things happening and their eyes begin to understand that something bigger and greater is happening. And that word Hosanna is often translated as save us now. Save us now. So do the crowds get it? Do they finally see Jesus for who he is and who he's saying he's been? That this is the savior, the one to set them free? Well, maybe. As many theologians and preachers have said over the centuries, likely the savior that they were saying Hosanna to was one of military might. They were expecting this, this person to liberate them from Roman oppression, to give them freedom not a savior who will release us from our sins and give us eternal life. Now, the Palm Sunday story is interesting, filled with all of these different intricacies uh, and odd components like the donkey. Uh, you know, Jesus only gives one justification when he says, I need a donkey, which is the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. And somehow that works. And as one commentary source pointed out, that actually in contrast to what Jesus offered, a lot of times Roman military leaders would demand a, a horse or donkey, some kind of livestock with no promise of return, that actually they would not often get it back, but what could they do? They would just take their possessions. And so in this, we see Christ's compassion already, saying, no, I'll, I'll give it back to you. This is for a particular moment. But the donkey is also prophetic. In Zechariah 9, we hear of the prophecy where the Savior will ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. Jesus gets it and is fulfilling this prophecy. But it's not just any donkey. As you heard in our passage, it's a, a colt, which is a young donkey that's never been ridden. Now picture this with me. If you've ever been around donkeys, especially colts, they're not particularly powerful or majestic animals, though I do love donkeys. And so imagine with me a fully grown man riding atop probably not a fully grown donkey. It's a bit comical if you really think about it. Are Jesus's feet like dragging on the ground? I don't know. Um, but this is truly in contrast to the Roman military processions that would happen this time of year where they would ride in on their tall, majestic war horses and process in to say, we're in charge, we rule. Instead, Jesus rides in, maybe clumsily or comically, on this colt, claiming his crown of Prince of Peace. And then we see Jesus' humility, the one who suffers and endures for our sake. There's also these other curious components like the cloaks that were laid down or the palm branches that we've waved this morning. Now, the cloaks, they symbolize a respect towards authority and another pointing back to the Old Testament. When, when in 2 Kings, people were laying down their cloaks on the road for King Yehu and his entrance. And now the palm branches. Now, this is where things get a little bit funny. And Mark's gospel, if you heard the scripture this morning, it said leafy branches. It didn't specify palm branches at all. It's, we get palm branches from John's gospel. And so uh, what were they exactly waving according to Mark? Who knows? But as, as a number of commentaries pointed out, there are many historic moments in the Jewish faith 
where they would wave palm branches as a sign of peace or celebration. So it's likely to be the palm branches that we were waving, something similar to that. And finally, Jesus enters on Passover. This religious pilgrimage, this set apart time and space where something holy is to be remembered and happen. There were lots of people there, services, sacrifices, celebrations. And at this time, they loved Jesus. And everything kind of comes into clearer vision and picture when we get to the temple, which is the whole point of this pilgrimage, the whole place of Jerusalem, that every commentary source I read said the temple is significant. At the end of our passage, Jesus stops at the temple. The scripture says, when he looked around at everything, it was already late. And he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So picture it with me, Jesus in this temple, you know, he's just received shouts of praise on his entry into Jerusalem and the the, the temple is virtually empty. According to Jewish historian Josephus, the crowds for this religious pilgrimage were estimated to be as many as 3 million people. And yet the temple is calm. It's at peace. This is remarkable. And so I imagine Jesus is soaking in this moment for a second envisioning what will happen over the course of the next few days, kind of like a musician who goes on stage hours before the performance to get a feel for their seat, the chair, the sound, the space, and the acoustics. It's a moment of peace and the chaos. And it's where everything will turn on its head. See, our, our passage that was read earlier from Mark 11 chronicles this triumphant entry. And throughout Mark's gospel, we hear all these different events leading to uh, the passage that Mark Easton read for us from Mark 15. And in between, we hear that at the temple, Jesus will cleanse it. He ch- the chief priest that will challenge Jesus' authority, and he will challenge them right back, leaving them in silence. Jesus instructs his disciples to watch out for the religious leaders. He lifts up the faithfulness of the widow's might and her generosity, especially given the backdrop of all these lavish gifts. I mean, think about all of the animals being sacrificed and bought and sold in this space. And he predicts the destruction of the temple, which is really his body. Through these twists, things take a turn. All of this praise turns to pain and it begins to become a tragedy where Jesus prepares and we prepare for the beginning of the end of betrayals and ultimately a crucifixion. Theologian Fem Perkins points out that crowds are not reliable. Maybe you've been in a crowd that turned sour before. I know I have. We have phrases like hive mind or mob mentality, which speak to this idea where things can go really south. I mean, we can easily think to three years ago, January 6th, here in our nation's capital, or in our nation's history, attack on protesters and the civil rights movement, and any number of other instances where crowds and people turned on each other. And it's the same people who shouted Hosanna and words of praise that offer up, crucify him. Duke theologian Stanley Hauerwas, he once put it in regards to this passage and crowds. He said, when given the choice for democracy, people chose Barabbas. People chose the insurrectionist, the murderer over the prince of peace, the one who is guilt free. So this was a a group betrayal. This was one of many betrayals Jesus would experience. And we don't know if it was because of pride or envy, dissent, or any of all, or all of these reasons. But as we look at this passage, things start to get a little uncomfortable for us because we know we're capable of the same. And friends, While a lot is said about Pilate too, he must not be absolved in this passage. Some gospel depictions almost paint him to be the good guy, but, you know, that he tried to save Jesus. But as we look in Mark's passage, he's more of a cog in a wheel. He's just a guy doing his job with a lot of power. And and maybe we can see a little bit of benevolence in this question. Why? What, What evil has he done? And yet, what does Pilate do? He just turns Jesus right over. He appeases the masses and he gives the constituents what he wants. What can I say? Pilate likes job security. But friends, we can join the mob too. Even if it's not what we planned or hoped. 
Holy Week invites us to think about what would we do? And maybe more pointedly, what are we capable of? In the wrong setting, in the wrong place, we're capable of, of great and terrible acts. It's because of this mentality that genocides have taken place throughout history, even to present day. We know war and violence crop up because of mob mentality and our inability to, to choose apathy, our reaching for fear or even yet no response, which is a response in and of itself in the face of tragedy and injustice. That's why the, sh the, the crowd shouts, crucify him. This is not a punishment that they're asking. This is a torture. This is not a sentence for a crime. This is an ending. And Jesus knew. That's why he avoided Jerusalem for so long. He knew he had more work to be done, but Jesus knew that this would be a tall task. It's why at the Mount of Olives before his crucifixion, he gathered with the disciples to pray and prayed to God, Lord, let this cup pass from me. So think in this moment, from praise to pain, what Jesus might be feeling. The sting of betrayal, loss, abandonment, disappointment. I mean, Jesus had fed some of these people in the crowd. He had performed miracles in front of them, maybe even healed some of them. And of course, these folks have plotted his arrest and death, and some now shall crucify him. Friends, there's much left to be said and there's much left to be heard throughout this holy week. But the invitation that Palm Sunday invites us into is who do we want to be? People who offer up praise or pain? Those who build up or those who tear down? Those who seek justice or those who reach for fear? And ultimately, will peace be our guide? See, Jesus starts out his ministry with the Sermon on the Mount saying, blessed are the peacemakers. But in Jesus' final moments, peace does not win out. Friends, we must start with peace within ourselves so that we can have peace with our neighbors. Peace, it can ease the tension that we feel so deeply, this pain and fear. It can offer us clarity in these moments of great stress and anxiety. It can allow us to hear God's voice speak to us. So as we prepare for the rest of the story, may the God of peace hold us in this tension of praise and pain, allowing us to listen more deeply. And may the God of peace call us to peace within and beyond. Would you pray with me? A loving and gracious God, we give you thanks that today we can shout praise and hosanna. We can acknowledge that you are our savior and that we call for you now to save us. Save us, Lord. Save us from ourselves. Save us from our fear. Save us from our anxiety and our worries. Lord, we ask for your peace. That when we get pushed around, when we get put in wrong settings, or when we let anger or fear control us, we do harmful things to ourselves and to one another. And even, Lord, to you. God, we pray that your peace would inspire us not just to be settled, but to act, to respond, to do, and to be people who make peace, not just live in peace. Oh God, guide us throughout these next few days. May we listen deeply. May we give our lives back to you. May we remember your sacrifice. May we remember your love and how you go forward for us. Oh Lord, we pray this in Christ's name and pray in the way that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we respond now to God's word, I invite you to stand as you're able. Let's lift our voices for our Palm Sunday response. Holy God, your son humbled himself even to death to show us the power of loving service. Guide those holding positions of power that their decisions give rise to the mutual flourishing of the world you so love. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. 
Healing God, your son is betrayed and crucified in our violent world each day. Raise us to a new and rightly ordered world through the reconciling love of Christ. We're all victims of violence, persecution, shame, or terror may stand together with you in peace. Save us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Two. <laughs>
Amen. Friends, as you go from this place, I invite you to receive this benediction. May the blessing of God who surmounts evil, who bears our pain and lives in us forever, fill you with a zeal for justice and passion for peace this day and always. Go in peace. Amen. My heart will sing.